Welcome to the first episode of TVLF. People have been wondering what forensic science is about. Forensic science is not familiar to Ghanaians. Why am I saying this? Not long ago, my friend who was in the Ghana Police Service asked me of a program I'm offering at the University of Cape Coast. I told him I'm offering forensic science. He was like, ah, is it those people that live in the forest and examine plants and animals? So now I'm here to give vivid explanation to what forensic science is about. Forensic science is the portmanteau of two words. That is to say that forensic at one side and science at the other side. Forensic comes from the Latin word forensis, which means belonging to a folly. And science also comes from scientific knowledge. So we can, with this, we can say confidently that forensic science is the application of systematic procedure knowledge and methodology to aid administration of justice. Um, in, the, in the ancient time, the, especially the impartial court of Rome, they used to have an open forum where people were using for instance, but didn't know they were using for instance in such a way that they bring fat and back it with an evidence. We have other branches of forensic science. The first branch of forensic science is a crime scene investigation. What do you understand by crime? Crime is any act or any intentional act that is punishable by law. We have two types of crime. We have the, um, the criminal law. So the criminal law, we have the actors we use and the menstrual. So the actors we use is the criminal act and the menstrual is the guilty mind. So if the person deliberately dates, then it becomes a crime. Now the crime scene is a place or a secure place that for instance, crime scene investigators come to pick evidence, secure the place and pick evidence. Even with the crime scene investigators, we have two people. We have others in the laboratory, we have those who go into the crime scene and took those evidence and be submitted to the laboratory people using sophisticated technology to find out um, the suspect. And now those evidence will go to those processes and will bring the result to the jury to make its final judgment. So in this, we have other branches of forensic science, which another which is um, the forensic pathology. What the forensic pathology does is that he find out how the crime happened, who are the suspects, what are the injuries, whether the person was stabbed or the person was murdered or something. So they try to do that to find out what actually, what are the injuries and how to answer the question, who are the suspects, what are the injuries. Also, another branch of forensic science is the ballistics and firearms. So with the ballistics, those experts, what they do is that they examine the, the ammunition. The ammunition is just a material fired, scattered, detonated, or scattered from a fired weapon, from a weapon, yeah, or a material. So, and note that every bullet has some identity on it, which we have it in the CID headquarters in Accra. Yeah, so with that, you can find out the person that this blade belongs to, they trace it and come to arrest you wherever you are. So the ballistic, they, they also can take the direction at which the bullet came from. That's the yaw angle. The yaw angle is the angle between the axis of the bullet and its trajectory. Yeah, and also another branch of forensic science is the forensic toxicology. Yeah, the, more, the ancient forensic toxicology was Paracelsus. He says something in Latin where we say, doce fule faste veneno, which means um, dosage makes it poisonous. Yeah. So, with that, um, the current or the modern forensic toxicology is the Matthias or failure. Yeah. And he is the now the modern forensic toxicology. He developed the skills that um, um, the study of poison and how the effect biological system like the human body and others yeah so this is how the forensic toxicology help in crime yes then the other branch of forensic science is the forensic anthropology what the forensic anthropology does is that he examines and identifies skeletal remains so like the case of the Takradi girls the forensic anthropologist going they went in and bring out the skeletal remains of this children, they realized that they made some analysis and they find out that those cast remains were not the children. So meaning that the children have taken to a different place. Yeah. Add to another branch of the forensic science, the forensic and um, question document examination. So the question document examination, what they do is that 
they try to find out the, um, to check the authentication of typewriters and writings and indicted writers. So they find out what whether it's fake and even with the bank checks, they check whether it's fake. So this is what the forensic um, question document examination expert does. Another branch of forensic science is the is the fingerprint analysis. So what the fingerprint does that people are saying their fingerprint is found anywhere. It's not found anywhere actually. It's found on surfaces, either being smooth or rough. So what they do they does is that they, in the fingerprint itself, you have two types. You have the Latin, latent fingerprint and the patent fingerprint. The latent fingerprint is the one that is invisible, and the patent is the one that is visible. So what it does is that they convert the latent fingerprint into a patent fingerprint, and then they match it with the standard and find the real culprit of a crime. Yeah, and also we have DNA analysis. So with the DNA analysis, those experts, what they do is that if there's cases of paternity, they want to find out who the real child belongs to. So sometimes in Ghana, mostly, people pick this, some people daughter, and they'll be like, because they'll take the paternity view, they'll be like, it's not mine, this is yours, it's not mine. So with that, we can run a DNA test, and when a DNA is being cut and being examined, you see that they have the same pattern with that of the child. Then that shows that it's the same, meaning that the child belongs to him. Then you have forensic accounting. So what the forensic account, those people mostly are employed in their banks, because there is some of embezzlement of funds, state funds and the banks or there's theft they want to there's an audit order those forensic accountants does that you try to check they also provide evidence to the court so that the court will make its final decision and also we have the forensic photography so what the forensic photographist does is that he uses um sophisticated um photographic techniques like the digital imaging the x-ray the ultraviolet to examine a picture and uh, to take the picture of the crime scene yeah and also so that to make every evidence that is hidden in the crime scene to be known yeah that's we take a photograph of the crime scene so that we find out where maybe some evidence have been hidden to do so before the crime scene even gets in so with that the forensic photographers send those evidence to the court so that you can show it to the court you can prove it yeah to the court and make a correct account of it Another branch of forensic science is the digital forensics or computer forensics. So this digital forensic, what it goes is that somebody, they check the activities of hackers, they identify computer, the way they share information through the, through the internet. So what they do is that they check those activities. Somebody can be in the United States, they see all whatever you are doing in Ghana here. You can see whatever thing you are doing online, whether you are watching pornography or what. The person can see using, they have some apps that they've created. They can use to hack into your system. So those people check the activities of hackers and scammers and all that. Yeah. And also, we have another called the sound analysis. So with the sound analysis, what forensic expert does is that they use a device called the sound spectrography. So if there is a case involved telephone threat and tape recorded, they convert though the sound spectrography converts the sound into a visual display. So that they match the suspect with that and find out who the suspect, the real perpetrators of the crime was. The next branch of forensic science, the forensic engineering. What's the forensic do? Maybe there's a collapse, like a student is being collapsed. They need people to come and examine what was the cause, what happened, and the building was collapsed. So the forensic engineers, they come inside and they examine, they try to find out what caused the breakdown, the collapse of the building or a bridge. That's the work of the forensic engineers. All this other and we have a, another branch called the forensic entomology yeah what the forensic entomology does is that they use the insect there to study using the, the rigorous mortis like when the body is dead when the person is dead first day when it's 24 hours after the death the insect because the body produces new proteins the insects sat on it and feed on it then without they lay eggs on the dead body so with that it's lay eggs and the eggs hatch into a lava and the lava also to the maggot and that date it hatch into the maggots so you can find that at the openings the count and wombs and all that so with that this is what they do then with that we have forensic psychology what a forensic psychologist does is that he study the pattern of the human behavior what's the criminal things why he did that and all that and minus 
Some criminal kills because it's their passion. They just feel like when they kill human beings, they feel okay. Yeah, finally, um, the last branch of forensic science I'd like to talk about is the forensic odontology. What the forensic odontologist does is that you, when the body is not recognizable by the police and other forensic experts, they call in the forensic odontology to come and find out, not knowing that the enamel is the hardest, I mean, the hardest substance in the human body. So that one, the body can die and, and bro, um, rotten, undergo the rigorous mortain and the rigorous liver and all that. But the taste does not go, it's the hardest and it remains the same. So with that, they can use that in the photography of the person. Yeah, the smile of the person showing his feet. Yeah, they can use that also. And also when there's a bite injury as an evidence in a crime scene, maybe when a person is dead or say a bite injury, you can read down and examine it and find out the real perpetrators of the crime. And also, people are saying that whenever you are studying for exercise, you always be at the BNI, work with the BNI, FBI, CID, CIA, Authority, yeah. but it's not, it's a big fast life. As a forensic scientist, you can also work at the bank, at the harbors, at the hospital. Um, please don't forget to like and comment on this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel TVLF. Thank you very much. Gracias.